Hi, in today's episode I'm going to show you how I made this bench for my mini lathe. I started off by cutting the lens to 40x40 40 40 from a 90x45 board of construction lumber. Then I ripped a bunch of strips to 25 by 45 which would then be glued up to the bench top. I'm not using the glue in the roller as that's type 1 1 and I wanted the longer open time of type 1 3 if I messed up the clamping at all. It's not particularly flat, but it's also not too bad. Um, and being behind, this will um, come down quite easily with hand tools. I'd have made it in two passes, um, in two pieces, sorry, I've got to put it through the thickness of it, uh, and then done a third glue up to join the two halves. But there's not a lot of material, it is pine, so it will cut very easily with hand tools. Uh, it's not a Jared uh, bench for example, so I'm not too concerned about that. So I'm going to throw on some music and break out a jack plane and see how we go. Two long stretches are cut the same as the leg, that is 40 by 40 from a 90 by 45 uh, piece of construction lumber. The design of the legs called for the feet to have angles cut in them at 45 degrees. As I don't have a miter saw and these are cross cuts, the only way to do this is with my cross cut sled. If you've seen my advanced crosscut sled video, you'll know that my sled has replaceable inserts, but up until now I haven't actually used that capability. This is how long it takes to switch over between the 90 and 45 degree inserts. With 10 inch table saw blade sitting on top of a crosscut sled while cutting at 45 degrees, I wasn't quite able to cut through the 45 millimeters required. I could have just used a hand saw to finish the cut, but it was just as easy to flip it on the sled and cut the remainder by lining that up with the curve lines on the sled.
To create the mortises, I hogged out the majority of the waste using an unfortunate bit in the drill press and then chiseled away the rest. Unfortunately, I forgot to hit record, so you'll have to imagine what a chisel looks like. Patterns were created on the table saw using a crosscut sled and a stop and just nibbling away the waste material until it fit into the mortises. And it was about this time that I felt like an idiot. After cutting four of the mortises, I remembered that a friend had given me a bushing guide set for my birthday, and I could cut all the mortises much quicker and more accurately using a router and a quickly made guide. I didn't record much of this, so I'll cover it in another episode. I've saved you the boring details and blow up. Um, now I need to attach the tabletop before I give it all a good finish. So I'm going to use a oversized drill bit to drill through the tops here, uh, and use a long screw with a washer to attach the top. That way, there's room for expansion. The placement of these is not overly critical. I'm going to put it towards the edges so that they're not somewhere to bite into. Well, they've got the best distribution of string for below. As I'm not sanding this, I used a hand clean to quickly ease over all the edges of the bit shop. I'm using amber shellac as the finish, which I mixed from dry flakes. I really like shellac as a finish for most things, but particularly for shop furniture and fixtures. Having a finish on shop items makes it much easier to clean off the sawdust. What makes shellac so great? Well, it dries really quickly. I can get two coats on in an hour, sometimes three. It's really cheap and it's really simple to apply. After all, this is a workshop item, so I don't need to go through the process of French polishing. If you guys want to see more about shellac, let me know in the comments below. Okay, it is a sweltering 36 degrees today, so I'm not going to get too much more of this video done and it'll be a couple of days before it can be edited, but we're almost there. Uh, I need to mount the lathe of the bench, and this is the rough position I want. We found more often than not when we were putting supplies on the bench, we wanted it at the headstock end of the lathe so it wasn't in the way. And with the clamp rack there, this gives us plenty of area to actually insert the uh, knockout bar and the other end is open so it's not too much of a concern. So the key thing here is to mark out the bench. I'm using an uh, automatic centre punch that I can then drill through and attach it with bolts. And given the pine is fairly soft, this doesn't tend to click too well, but it still leaves a good impression. There we go. So probably the big question is, why did I go for this design rather than uh, probably a more typical work table, which is just your standard four legs with uh, stretches in between, or rails and say an MDF replaceable top. I wanted something that would look a bit prettier. Um, it's gonna be equally as sturdy. Something that would not necessarily push some of my skills, but push me to do something other than just a work table. There's nothing wrong with a work table, and in fact I'll probably make one for whatever tool goes next to this. But I just wanted to do something a little bit different. Now this is just as stable. Um, I mean, unfortunately the floor here is very uneven, so the solution is to shim that up. 
Uh, it doesn't matter how flat I make this. In fact, if I had made it not square, it would have been a little bit better. Now you might want something heavier and larger if you're putting a, your primary lathe. This is our secondary lathe. It's reserves um, just for spindles. And in fact, for small spindles like pens, uh, bottle stoppers, that sort of thing, I actually prefer this lathe. It runs very quietly. Uh, it's a little bit of a pain to adjust the speeds, but it is a really nice lathe, particularly for how much we pay. Uh, and the other reason is that I can get some good uh, storage under here. I don't have the rails to run into. This is a bit of a tone nuisance here, but it's actually not too bad unless you're setting up the lathe for the first time. So I think go in, it's in a good position. Plans for this will be available on my website, so see the description below for links to those plans. Thanks for watching. Before I forget, there may be a brief hiatus for the show. Uh, my mum and sister both want a whole bunch of furniture, so that may uh, eat up most of my editing time. I will endeavour to film at least a couple of the pieces of furniture. First up is a dining table, a trestle based dining table. Uh, there will also be a different style dining table, hall table, buffet, a couple of different designs of side tables, coffee table and TV unit. So they went ahead and bought a whole bunch of pre-laminated bench shop slabs uh, that are in Tasmanian Oaks. There will be videos coming on these but they will prevent smaller projects from happening in the meantime.